Hello, my name is Cage Parkins. Today I'm going to be setting up this Fender Jazz Bass. It looks like it's made in Mexico. Uh, today it's going to be a little bit of a longer video, not too many cuts. I'm going to be going through and doing the whole setup on camera and explaining to you what I'm doing. Uh, so we'll get started. When I set up an instrument, the first step I'm going to do is take my strings and have them set aside and then the tools that I'll need for the job and for this job I like to use my Music Nomad little tool. I'll be using a Daddario peg winder here as well as a Music Nomad ruler. I've also got a set of radius gauges here and I'll show you how to use those as well. We will be going ahead and polishing the frets and giving a little bit of love to that fingerboard. It looks like it could use it some conditioning. So the very first thing I'm going to do is check out what condition the bass is in. The customer said that he wants his action to be lower on this bass. So I'm going to take a look first at the neck. And see that this neck does have quite a bit of bow so let me see if I can get that a little bit better on camera here so if you can see that there is quite a bit of curve in the neck A little hard to pick up on camera. So now that I've diagnosed that, taking a look around, I'm going to check the electronics. So this is a basic setup. Um, I'm not going to be taking apart the base, just cleaning it. Quick clean, polish the frets, dial in the action. The very first thing that I'd like to do is take the strap off when I'm working on someone's instrument. You don't want to accidentally pull it off the table. side with the strap locks. All right, so first things first, we'll remove the strings. When removing the strings, just put a little bit of tension to straighten them out a little bit.
tone. When you're working on somebody else's instrument, you just want to be taking special care to not drag the strings across the paint, across the hardware, so that you don't scratch it. Set the old strings aside and I like to take a little brush and just dust off that surface dust so this is a good thing to do to avoid rubbing dirt or dust into your finish when you polish it is just to give it a good dusting first With a bolt-on neck, I always like to make sure that I just check the screws, especially if the instrument's being played a lot. They're gonna vibrate loose just a little bit. And this one, this is a good example of that. They're just, just a hair loose. So you just wanna snug them up. They don't need to be super tight, but I like them pretty snug. Check the strap pins. And then I'll hit the bridge screws as well. You want to be double checking things like this a couple times of year. screws will vibrate out of the wood and you'll start to lose sustain and resonance just a little bit. So we're good to go there. Tuning machine feeling pretty good. String tree is good. All right now we've got a nice Preliminary cleaning. Just gonna dust inside here a little bit. So, this is my basic setup that we're doing right now. Normally, people do go for the premium setup I offer, but the premium setup is when I disassemble the whole guitar and then reassemble it. This is just a quick keeping it playing set up. And while I've got the strings off, I'm gonna go ahead and check the radius here so that I don't uh, risk scratching the fingerboard. Got a 10 inch radius, so I'll leave my radius gauges set aside with the correct one facing out. Red edges are pretty good on here. Nothing too obtrusive. And then oh. 
I use just a little bit of rubbing alcohol and water solution to clean the grime off of the top of the nut there. Um, I don't use that too much places. So real quick on the chrome just to get off a little bit of the thick hand grime there. And then the next step I'm going to do is fine, uh, polish the frets. It's important to polish your frets every time you do a setup, pretty much every time you change your strings. It's a good idea to polish up your frets. If you use guitar polish, you could use fret polish. Either way, you want to reduce the friction on the frets and reduce the wear. And This fingerboard's not too dirty, so I'm just gonna buff it as I polish it. And so what I'm using here is this Frine Fret Polish by Music Nomad. It's like a micro abrasion polish. Um, had this tube for a few years and used it on countless guitars. So that's something that I would definitely invest in. And it comes with a little micro mesh towel that you can use. Um, some people say to apply the Frine directly to the towel and then polish the frets. I've seen people do it like this, where you paint the fret with the polish and then buff it off. Uh, since I'm going to be using a Dremel tool, I will actually be uh, just polishing the frets like this. Uh, I, I, I prefer, since I'm using the Dremel tool, I prefer to paint the frets with the polish before makes it a little bit easier. Um, it is a little bit messy if you're using the Dremel tool, so I would recommend some safety glasses just in case. And this part is very simple. Go ahead and take our Dremel tool and plug it in. And you don't have to use your fastest setting. Um, I'm using a two and a half on here. And with this, you don't want to hold the Dremel too long on the fret 
because it could potentially heat up the glue and release it. So it's going to be pretty quick. So I'm doing about five seconds on each fret, just enough to buff off the polish. And if you don't have these fret guards here, uh, you can just use some masking tape, some painter's tape. All right, now that the frets are polished with the Dremel tool here, I'm gonna go ahead and just set that aside and do one more quick pass with the micro mesh to make sure I get the remainder of the polishing compound off. And then after that final polish, they look super shiny. So we're done with our frying here. And then the next thing to do is going to be to condition this fingerboard. It's like a laurel. And you can use F1 Oil by Music Nomad. Uh, there's a few fingerboard conditioning products out there. Uh, I just use a mineral oil because that is what the F1 Oil is, but you can get this mineral oil at a more affordable price if you're doing a lot of guitars. 
And with that, we'll just go ahead and evenly distribute and buff into the wood with your mineral oil. Since this fingerboard is pretty dry, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a second pass of oil on it. And just massage that oil into that fingerboard. Cool. Not, I don't know. I've seen some people kind of saturate the fingerboard with this when they're working on their guitar. I find that you really don't need much at all. Now let's just let it sit a few seconds. And we'll wipe off the top layer. And since this is laurel and not rosewood, it's going to be, it's going to stay pretty light. But, so that's my, that's how you, I usually condition a fingerboard unless it's super, if, this, if the fingerboard's super dry, I'll let it soak for maybe five minutes tops. You want to be careful because it could soften up your fingerboard, make your frets raise out of the fingerboard. Uh, or just swell it up, make it sticky for the foreseeable future. Future, But now we are done with the neck part. And then you go ahead and just use a regular guitar polish at this point to buff it up and make it look nice.
And again, since this is the basic setup I offer, I'm not gonna go too deep into actually cleaning this base. Just get it nice preliminary clean so it looks good. Wipe down the tuning machines. The headstock. All right. So now we've got the base pretty clean. I would say all right. So now that we got the base cleaned up, we can go ahead and begin the setup. Got some Diodario NYXL. My basic rule of thumb with the NYXLs here is I just do an entire index finger or with the, the bass strings, I'm sorry, with these style of tuner is I take my index finger and measure the entire length of it and then I'll grab the string at my final knuckle, bend it, and then about an inch or so down, trim it, place that string in the tuner. it on up and I like to keep a lot of backwards tension on the string to make sure my wraps stack Again, measure with the entire length of my index finger, bend at a right angle, about a half inch down from the bend, small trim, and wind. And remember, if you've never changed your strings before, or you're getting, you're new to setting up your own instrument, uh, when you're winding your strings, you're always going to tune away from yourself to tune up. You want the post to wrap from the inside out on your tuning machine. So from the bottom of the post around to the outside. Since these are Daddario's, they are color-coded, making them very easy to install.
So what just happened here is the strings were binding up the bottom of the post. So before I had a lot of tension on it, I went ahead and just pulled up on it to seat the string into the uh, proper area of the post here, into the groove. I'm gonna go ahead and put that under the string tree. Get our last string going on here. And just, just like with guitar strings, I do go ahead and just stretch bass strings just a little bit. And we go ahead and just check our nut. Just make sure we're moving freely in there. Something you can do for both guitars and basses is put a little bit of pencil graphite in the nut slot. And that's gonna help with some tuning stability with the string being able to move back and forth. It's gonna reduce friction. So now we've got the strings on the bass, we're ready to get into the actual setup. So the first step of the setup is putting new strings on the bass. The second step of the setup is going to be to tune the bass. I found that it doesn't really matter when you're tuning the bass, if you start from your high strings or your low strings. All right, now the bass is in tune, so we can actually check out how the setup currently is versus how it was with the old strings. And it looks like we've still got some pretty high action on the bass. And the way I like to check that is I will depress the first fret and the last fret. And at about the seventh fret, I'm gonna be looking at how much space there is for the strings travel. And we've got a good quarter of an inch, um, quarter to a third of an inch of space between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret when depressing. So that means that our neck has quite a bit of curve in it or bow. It's an easy adjustment. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take my Allen wrench and make sure that you have the proper Allen wrench for your instrument before doing this. I'm going to loosen the strings just a little bit take some of the tension off the neck because we're going to be increasing the tension inside of the neck to make it sh 
straighter. I will take my Allen wrench. And you need to make sure that your Allen wrench seats in the nut perfectly. And we're gonna do about a quarter of a turn there. And off that quarter of a turn, we will retune the base. And this is where it's important. You don't want to send your neck into shock by just cranking it over like a whole turn, two turns right off the bat, because the neck is gonna take a minute to settle. So we're just going to retune it and then check how much relief we have. And we'll do it a couple of times because it's better safe than sorry. You're not going to break your neck by adjusting the truss rod too much, but you might make it kind of get a little wacky to where it won't respond as quick as you need it to and give yourself an incorrect adjustment. So we'll double check. It looks like it's a little bit lower. I'm just going to go back through. Loosen the strings again. And this is really you know, this is the, the part where you want to take your time. You want to make sure that you do this correctly and you don't strip your truss rod or anything. You don't over tighten your truss. So, what I will do here is kind of make a breaker bar. Just under a quarter turn there. So that's a trick I want to show you is sometimes you can't get the Allen wrench in at this angle because of the strings or it's just a little too deep so you need to put the Allen wrench in alongside in and you're stuck with no leverage here. That's where something like a removable head screwdriver is good. You could just put the Allen wrench inside and then use it as a breaker bar. Uh, like you would if you were working on a car or something. So we did about a quarter turn again. We're going to retune this base. And already I can feel that the action is, is becoming lower. I would say that about 90% of the time when an instrument has high action, it's because the truss rod needs to be adjusted. A lot of instruments I've seen uh, get shipped with no tension on the truss rod. And has people like, well, how come the action's so high right out of the box? Don't they set these things up? Yes, they do. Wherever the instrument came from, it's probably a different climate where the wood's just finished drying or settling. So it's really no big deal as long as the truss rod moves. So we're getting pretty close. We've got, I would say about just over an eighth of an inch of relief still. So I'm gonna keep going. So I believe that Fender specs like 0 0.01 like a hundredth of an inch or so for relief on their bases did about another quarter of a turn it is good to get yourself a set of feeler gauges if you're new to this so that you can get some exact measurements and know about where to start with the base's uh, relief.
just keep in mind that not every instrument is the same, so it does come down to feel and what the bass is willing to accept or the guitar is willing to accept for the setup. Some instruments like more relief than others, some instruments like no relief. I have some guitars where the neck is almost straight and some guitars that have quite a bit of curvature in the neck just because that's what was necessary to achieve optimal playability. So following a spec sheet is a good roadmap to get you in the ballpark of where you should be to get your instrument set up the way you'd like it. But just remember that those specs are not always going to be what the instrument wants to be set up to play well and to feel good. Uh, some instruments feel better with higher action, some instruments feel better with lower action. And I'd say we got about one more quarter turn left till we've got this neck in. So I've done countless setups at this point, so I usually just eyeball my neck so I know about what feels good. And I usually dial in the action to its final spec using the truss rod. And you know, it's gonna tighten up a little bit. Once it starts becoming forceful to move, you just wanna stop. If you run your truss rod in all the way and it seems like it's tightened all the way, if you have to put force into turning it, you need to stop turning it. Or, or you could run the risk of stripping the truss rod. Some instruments, will max out before before the ideal spec and then you'll have to just try to work around the setup through the action adjustment on the bridge this one is in really good condition though truss rod is moving freely This is a good example of, of an instrument that had very little tension on the truss rod. And that's why it had such an extreme bow to it. getting pretty close I would say probably about an eighth of a turn so for these last few measurements I am going to leave the string tension it's going to be very minimal turn see there you want to make sure that it's seated all the way I didn't even have it in there So it's looking like this truss rod might be maxed. One reason I do loosen the strings is because like right now I'm having a hard time actually seating this into a truss rod nut. There we go. sound of a dog in the background. Hey buddy, chill out.
right, now that we have the truss rod dialed in, we're gonna go ahead and check the intonation. Usually the intonation is pretty good out of the box on these fenders. It looks like it is just a little sharp on this guitar, on the G string. If your intonation is sharp, you're gonna wanna go ahead and move the string a little bit further back. If the intonation is flat, you wanna move the saddle a little bit forward. Just want to use the right screwdriver for the job. And this is one of those things that you're going to want to do on a micro level. All right, so there I actually messed up just a little bit. We're gonna set our action before we set our intonation just to make sure that the intonation is correct with the action that we're after. And usually Fender, I believe it's about 864, 664, it's kind of in that area. 8 to 664 at the 17th fret. And so we're at about 7.5, 864s. I think we can go lower on this, so we're going to go ahead and put the action closer to 564. And again, that's where one of these measuring tools comes in real handy. And I'm measuring from the 17th fret. On guitars, you usually measure about the 12th fret. Basses are the 17th fret. And we go to 764 on the treble side and match that here on the bass side. Well, I'm going to leave it just a hair over 7 64 on the bass side. And then what you can do is use your radius gauges. Slide that in there. Pretty in the way there. All right. There we go. And you just want to make sure that the
bottom of the string touches the top of the radius gauge across the board and that should give you pretty even action. Generally, what I prefer to do is use the ruler rather than the radius gauge. And then I will dial it in with the ruler. So if you, if you measure each string from the bottom of the string to the top of the fret, you will achieve the correct radius as well. And it's just for preference. Some people like the gauges because they're quicker. That's why I demonstrated them. So now we've got our action set. We'll go ahead and retune the bass. And pretty much the saddles are pretty close to bottoming out is why I'm stopping where I am with how low I'm putting the action. So if you bottom them out on the base plate, they could rattle and we want to avoid any rattling and buzzing. All right, and now we'll go ahead and check our intonation. good. Looks good. And you can use a stroboscopic tuner. I found that these snark tuners are actually very accurate in comparison. And you want to let that note ring out because it, it's going to be a little sharp as soon as you hit it. But these tuners work pretty well for setting intonation. I've compared guitars I've set the intonation on with the Snark, gone back and checked it on the Peterson tuner, and it's always spot on. Our A and D string were pretty good. Our D and our G were just a little sharp. So we'll run those saddles back just a little bit. So pretty much what you're doing when setting the intonation is just making sure that the Fretted note, the 12th fret note fretted is the exact same as the harmonic at the 12th fret or exactly an octave above the open string because this is going to be the middle of your neck essentially and that's going to determine how in tune the notes above your 12th fret are. And so there we have it. This bass is pretty much good to go. It has pretty good action. I'll go ahead and just check the action.
And there I'm just checking to make sure every note is ringing out nice. Aren't being choked out by higher frets. It's pretty good. Our final step will be to go ahead and make sure that our pickup height is good. For pickup height, I depress the 17th fret and I will measure from the bottom of the string to the top of the bobbin of the slug on the pickup. And it's kind of a personal preference for pickup height. You want it to be about 864. Some people like their pickups higher. Some people like their pickups lower. With single coils, it can affect the intonation slightly. And so what I'm going to do here is just lower the pickup on this side just a hair because it's very close to the G string. And that looks pretty good. All right. And when you're setting up your bass, I uh, just want, to, or your bass or your guitar, I want to reiterate that the specs that you could look at, um, they're just kind of a guiding, a guidance. You're not going to find many instruments that are going to accept those specs exactly. Sometimes you have an instrument that you can put lower action than the specs from the manual say. Sometimes the guitar or the bass just simply does not like that low of action uh, as much as you want it. And you can find that dialing in the action just a, a little bit higher, putting a little bit extra relief in the neck makes the guitar feel perfect. Even though on paper, the neck has a little bit more bow in it than you prefer, or the action is higher on this guitar than it is on that guitar but feel wise they're very similar just because you've dialed it in and gotten the tension correct so not every instrument is the same in that regard every instrument is different and you want to treat them as such as individuals you want to play the instrument a little bit and get a feel for it my goal especially for basses is to make sure that there's lots of sustain very clear notes and very comfortable to play. Like, this action is not the lowest action. But it's very comfortable. The neck is pretty much where we want it with the relief. Saddles are almost bottom now, but it's at a very comfortable state. All the notes are very clear, and that's what you want to get out of your bass or guitar. All right, guys. Well, that was a setup on this Fender Jazz Bass. Uh, it came out pretty good. It's playing really nice. So this bass is playing very nice, sounds really good. Like I was saying, not every instrument is the same though, so um, I follow basic Fender specs when I'm going to set up just about any, any instrument, especially uh, 24, 25 and a half inch uh, scale guitars. I think there's a 30 inch scale bass. Um, I'll follow the Fender spec to get me in the ballpark of where I'm going, but then I play to the instrument. 
And with that, I mean that every instrument requires its own separate setup, whether that be slightly higher action, slightly more relief in the neck, maybe your instrument like the bone straight neck, everyone is different. But I hope to show you some more uh, full setup videos. I hope that this was informative and helpful. Uh, until next time, thank you for watching. Uh, once again, my name is Cage Parkins. I've got some music on Spotify. Uh, my band Cage in the Rampage has a couple jams on Spotify as well. If you want to jump on there and check it out. And uh, I'll see you all soon. Thank you.